Okay, hello and welcome to this part two of this video in which we are determining the properties of the discrete time system defined by y of n is x of negative n. In part one, we determined that the system is not memoryless and that the system is not time invariant. In this part, hopefully we'll be able to determine if it's linear, causal, and stable. So let's go ahead and look at um, whether or not the system is linear. Okay, a system that is linear actually has to satisfy two different properties. The first is homogeneity, and this shows how you test whether or not a system satisfies homogeneity. And the idea is you take a signal, you put it into the system and get whatever the output is, and then you multiply that output by some constant, which I've called A. Then you take the same signal, you multiply it by the constant first before you run it through the system, and then you run it through the system and see what comes out. And if what comes out after you've multiplied the input by A is equal to what you got when you multiplied the output by A, then your system satisfies the property of homogeneity. Okay. And uh, again, this is the first half of determining whether or not something's linear. Okay, well, so let's see. Uh, if we on, on this one, we can probably just do it like this. Okay, y of n up here on this first one is going to be x of minus n, right? Because that's basically the way our system is defined. It's output, it just time reverses uh, the input. And so the output a y of n is going to be a times this thing, which is x of minus n. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. Okay, going in, I have x of n, I multiply it by a. So going into the system now, I have a times x of n. Coming out of the system, I will have the input just time reversed. In other words, I change the sign on the n. So if I have a times x going in, I'll have a times x coming out, but I'll have changed the sign on the n. Okay, so um, you can see that these two guys are indeed equal. So the system does satisfy the property of homogeneity. And again, homogeneity is half of linearity. Okay, so we can say yes to homogeneity. Let's go ahead and look at additivity. Okay, additivity works like this. Um, I have, I, I, I take a signal, run it into my system, get the output, take a different signal, or it could be the same as X1, but it doesn't have to be, run it through my system, get the output, then add them together. Then I take the two signals, add them together first, and run them through my system and see what comes out. If this guy is the same as the sum of these two guys, then I have a system that satisfies additivity. Okay, so let's just see if this one does. We say that we see that y1 coming out in response to x1, y1 will be x1 of negative n. Okay, because all our system does is change the sign of n. y2 will be x2 of negative n. Okay, which means that y1 of n plus y2 of n, this will be y1 is x1 of negative n, y2 is x2 of negative n. Okay, so on the bottom row, uh, we put in x1n plus x2n. This is what goes into the system. Okay, and all my system does, all the system does to get an output is change the sign of the n's. Now, in this case, since I've got a sum going in, I'll have um, a sum coming out with each of these n's changed in sign. So, this will be x1 of negative n plus x2 of negative n. And you can see that this guy and this guy are the same. So the system does satisfy additivity. 
So it satisfies both additivity and homogeneity, which means I can go back to my um, list here and say, yes, the system is linear. Okay, so it's memory, it's not memoryless and not time invariant, but it is linear. Okay, the next thing to check is whether or not it's causal. And for a system to be causal, the output, um, let's see, for a system to be causal, the output at time n should depend on the input at values of n or before n minus 1 or so on, but not on values after n. Okay, so a causal system is a system that can look, that looks only to the past and not to the future to determine what its output is. Now, in this case, uh, as you recall when we first started talking about it, when n is positive, then the system does look to its past to determine the output. But when n is negative, the system is looking into the future to determine what its output is. So this system is not causal because causal systems don't look into the future. Okay, and finally we have, is the system stable? And to determine if the system is stable, we have to say if we have a bounded input, can we guarantee that the output is also bounded? So what that means is um, if I can say that the magnitude of the input or the absolute value of the input, although it could be complex where that would be magnitude, if that's less than some number b for every value of n, okay, this means that the input is bounded. It never strays beyond plus or minus b. If this is bounded and I can show then that the boundedness of this implies that y is bounded, then the system is stable. Okay, well all this system does is it takes my x's, my inputs, and it reorders them in time, but it doesn't enlarge, it doesn't uh, multiply them by anything, it doesn't add them, it doesn't do anything other than rearrange them in time. So if this is true for every n, then y of n will also be less than b. So if this is true for every n, because y of n is equal to x of some different n, it'll be true. So I can say that yes, the system is stable. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, an example of how to determine if a system is memoryless, time invariant, linear, causal, and stable. So, hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching.